Hello everybody and welcome to ILEC 202 Communication Systems. My name is Walid al Nawami, and I'll be taking you through this module this semester. Now it's a seven and a half credit module, but it's a fast tempoed module full of activity. So there's 11 weeks this semester and there's 11 weeks of activity, something happening every week. Now, before we start, a few words about communication systems and why they're important. So as an electronic engineer, or an electrical and an electronic engineer, you can't avoid communication systems. As a citizen of the digital society, you can't avoid communication systems. They're around us wherever you look. They're ubiquitous. We live in a connected society that's only going to become more and more connected. So understanding the principles of how these communication systems is really important. So communication systems, this second year module, helps prepare you to understand all these different concepts relating to communications. So they won't be enough for you to understand the details of advanced communication systems. And most of these topics you'll be studying in your third and fourth year if you're doing a master's. So I'll just clarify the kinds of things we will be looking at and those we won't be looking at in ELEC 202. So there will be some familiar concepts, things you've picked up in other modules, such as signals and systems or instrumentation. So you'll come across spectral representations and convolution and frequency domain, Fourier transform, bandwidth, sampling, and all that. You've seen that before, so we won't be assessing you on these topics again, but we'll be using these principles. So these topics will come up fairly frequently. So things like electromagnetic propagation, these are necessary, or it's necessary to understand this in order to carry out any kind of communication on a, a wireless propagation channel. But this isn't something we'll be covering this module. This is something, there is a third year module to look at uh, propagation effects. Similarly, there's a third year module that will look at antennas and antenna design. We're not looking at antennas in this module. We might refer to antennas, we might speak about antenna dimensions, but very briefly, we're not going, we're not going to dedicate more than 10 minutes talking about antennas. Digital communications, on the other hand, we will be devoting half of this module to the latter half, so lectures eight onwards, we'll be looking at digital communications. So digital communications is very important, but there is, again, ELEC 377, 477 in your third, fourth year, we'll look at digital communications in much more detail. So we're, all, we're only going to scratch the surface of digital communications. Similarly, the electronics necessary, the digital and the analog electronics necessary to design a functioning communication systems, we won't be looking at that. We won't be looking at circuit design or electronics. There is a third year module that looks specifically at electronics for communications. Similarly, photonics, very important for baseband digital communications. There is a third year module that looks at photonics. So what we study in this module, ELEC 202, will prepare you for all these year three modules. So that's a, a brief bit of background. The structure of the module is similar to um, your signals and systems last year with a few key differences. So it's a seven and a half credit module, so there's less content, but I still have 12 lectures to give. So signals and systems was 15 credits and we had around 11 lectures. This is a seven and a half credit module, but I still have 12 lectures. So there are 12 lectures. We only have 11 weeks this semester, so that means on um, at least one week, there's going to be more than one lecture a week. Okay, so um, look at the course schedule that's up on Canvas, and you can see exactly what's happening every week. I also have 10 problem classes. That will be a, a mixture of five Kahoot classes and five Q&A and problem sheet solutions. Okay, so we're going to have 10 problem classes in total. There are also two labs 
Now, these labs don't count towards ELEC 202, but they're related to ELEC 202. So there's one lab about sampling and digitization and one lab about modulation. Closely related to communications, but the marks don't actually contribute to the communications module. The actual marks come from two class tests. So there's one class test in week six, that will be an online Canvas test, and another one in week 11. Each of these is worth 15%. So your final mark will consist of 15% of each of these class tests plus your final exam. Now, there won't be practice tests. So the class test will be online, but there won't be practice tests, not like uh, in signals and systems where you had a practice test every other week. You do have problem sheets and there'll be plenty of pen casts and examples and solved examples. And there'll be the Kahoot quizzes and there'll be Q&A sessions, but there won't be any practice tests. What there will be is a weekly progress check. Okay, so every week there will be a progress check. Okay, it says 12 week weekly progress checks. Actually, there are 11 weeks this semester, so 11 progress checks. Every week, there is a progress check. Now that progress check is an online quiz with one question. There's only one question, and you have to get the question right. It's the easiest question possible. I always choose a really easy question, but there's one question, and you have to get it right. Okay, so you either score 100%, or you score zero percent, nothing in between. But because the way I've set up the assessment, you have to get 100 percent in every single progress check. So every week you have to score 100 percent. There's no possibility of scoring zero. If you score zero, you fail the module, or at least you fail the class work component of the module. Now the good news is, even though there's one question, and you have to pass it, you have unlimited attempts. So you can repeat the question an unlimited number of times, okay? There's an unlimited number of times to repeat the question. And there's no timer, okay? So there's no time limit, and you have an unlimited number of times to attempt the progress check. But it's only one question, and it's an easy question. But you need to get 100% every single week, okay? That's really important. So that should be in your Canvas calendars. Okay, so that's how the module is going to be assessed. Now, in terms of housekeeping, how we're going to run the module, it'll be different from ELEC uh, 270, different from signals and systems. We're going to stick, obviously, to the published course schedule. That's available on Canvas. Uh, make sure you look at that. Make a note of all the key dates for your class tests. Now, every week, we're going to start off with some problem classes, and I expect you, on the Monday, to have watched the lecture, okay? We're not going to spend time in our interactive sessions, in our live sessions, going through the lectures again. I expect you, on Monday, to watch the lecture, okay? Because on Wednesday, we have our problem classes. Now, these problem classes, unlike signals and systems, I expect you to turn up. So, attendance is compulsory. Everybody needs to turn up, okay? I expect everyone to turn up to these problem classes, okay? There will be problem sheets. These problem sheets are for you to solve in your own time. I've already solved them for you. The answers are all there, or well, most of the answers are there um, through pencasts, so YouTube videos where I go through the solutions for all the questions, but I also expect you to go through these problem sheets in your own time. Every couple of weeks, we're going to have a um, problem class where we go through the problem sheets together. And if there are any questions, we can, um, we can answer them together. Okay, all the material I will make available uh, on Canvas uh, weekly. If you have questions, use the discussion area. That's the best place to get questions. Don't send me an email. I won't reply to emails. So if you have any question about the module, put it up on the discussion board. If it's a question that you don't want to share with the rest of the class, you just want to talk to me, then I'm available every day. My office hours are from 12 o'clock to half past 12 every day. 
Okay, so just click on the link and that'll open up a uh, Zoom meeting and uh, wait a few minutes for me to get online and then I'll see you face to face and we can go through any questions you have. Okay, so that's what I expect of you and what you can expect of me. So what is it we're actually going to cover? So the material will consist of the lecture notes, so very similar to Signals and Systems. The lecture notes, that's the PowerPoints, the recorded uh, lectures, the problem sheets, and the pencasts to support the problem sheets, the cahoots, there are five of them at the moment, so the five cahoot quizzes, the discussion board to support both of those, and other resources I put on YouTube, okay? You will need a textbook, okay? So um, whatever program you're doing, whether you're doing communication, electronics and communications, or any other program, it's good to have a textbook. I still have the communication textbooks from when I was at university. I bought two communication textbooks and I still have them. And I still set exam questions from those textbooks. Um, so it was a really good investment for me. So spend a few pounds buying a textbook. If you can't buy one, borrow one from the library or find one online if it's available for free and download it. Okay, there are some recommended textbooks I'll show you, but any any undergraduate textbook on communications or analog and digital communications should do the job. So these are the ones I recommend. So that last one there, that's the one I actually uh, studied um, with uh, obviously an earlier edition, but this is the one I studied um, with at university. Okay, so these are three suggested uh, textbooks. Any undergraduate text on communications should be fine. Okay, so what's the module going to be about? It's communications. In the past, this module used to be called analog and digital communications. So there's an analog component and a digital component, roughly 50-50, but I spend more time on the analog component because there's a little bit more to explain and the digital is a little bit easier. Plus there's a second, uh, sorry, there's a third year module on digital communications. So um, I don't need to go into too much depth. So when we speak about analog communications, I'm going to introduce modulation. So that will be my second lecture, lecture two. Then I'm going to talk about amplitude modulation, AM, and then we're going to talk about FM and PM, which come under something called angle modulation. Then we're going to talk about noise. Then we're going to talk about digitization, which is the uh, bridge between analog, communica uh, analog communications and digital communications, so sampling and quantization. So you've come across this several times before, but we'll look at it in a little bit more detail in this module. We'll look at pulse modulation, obviously digital, digital transmission, baseband, multiplexing, and channel capacity. I'll actually talk about channel capacity slightly earlier in the semester, but that's one topic that we will be covering. So that summarizes um, the material we'll be covering in ELECT 202. Our first lecture, lecture one, is Introduction to Communications. Now that I will uh, make available to you recorded using the conventional um, uh, PowerPoint um, uh, medium. So lecture one, Introduction to Communications, will be recorded separately and I expect you to have watched that uh, by the end of the first week. So I hope you found that overview helpful. I look forward to teaching you this semester. I hope I managed to uh, make this module um, interesting, stimulating, relevant and fun. I can't promise to make it easy for you, but I promise I will do the best I can to make it easy for you to do well and to succeed. It isn't a difficult module. Students generally do very well on it. I give you every opportunity to do well, and I will be supporting you at every uh, step along the way. So um, uh, good luck, and I'll see you at our next session.